Let's charge the damn mound powered by Tiza and talk all things American League side first, and then we'll get to the National League with Russ Dorsey in about 10 minutes. So the Texas Rangers didn't just win. They owned the Houston Astros on their turf and got to celebrate. And this is a pretty heated rivalry now. And also the fan base was just loving it because Houston has just dominated Major League Baseball and regular season, AL West, postseason contention all the time. Obviously, you know, they've taken two titles out of it, and one of them is definitely scarred. But still, this team has been the most dominant contender, I would say. Like, the Dodgers win the division almost every year, but they haven't gone as deep into most of their playoff rounds as Houston has. So look at this team go. Early on, they cracked the code of Christian Javier. Max Scherzer trade pickup wasn't great, right? Like, how would you evaluate Scherzer here? He pitched better than Javier. You definitely pitched better than Javier. Javier. Yeah. Uh, That's the main dude, though, right there. Oh, yeah, Adolis Garcia. He gave up – he went two and two-thirds. Gave up two, got got some outs. The problem was this game was over in the first inning. I mean, the first guy who made an out, Marcus Simeon, hit a ground ball, which was telling. And then after that, it was just – pill the – Rangers pillaged them after that. I mean, they just five in a row them. reached. Homer uh, yeah. walk, stolen base, long single, stolen base, single, single. Good night, Christian Javier. Game over. Game over. I didn't think it was over not there. game over. It was that's, game over. When you go up four nothing in the first inning or three. whatever, three nothing in the first inning, and then it was three one right yeah, after that. Game over. And then Brantley hit the double play. Game over. I think in I'm a sorry. lot of cases. I think in a lot of cases it'd be game over, but not with this. With this Rangers bullpen the way it was going to be, if you said, okay, Scherzer's only, you're up 3-1, and Scherzer's only giving you two and two-thirds, you're like, okay, this, yeah, but, how, did, how did we get through this? Because yeah, but, it, it ended up being 4-1, four, four and then it was 4-2, so it, it, was, it looked like it was going to be back and forth. You had an opportunity to claw back if you're the Astros. To me, when the game was over, when they just let – J.P. France hang out to dry. He just stayed out there forever. I didn't know he was going to end up being complete game France. Like, there was – I couldn't believe how many batters he, he had. He pitched an inning, didn't he? Well – I. You know what I mean. Was it an inning? Yeah. I mean, Here's the also, problem. they, they had trying be... to save arms for game eight. No. They, he used, <laughs> Dusty used them all. What are you talking about? Dusty used them all. The problem is, is that Dusty – listen, I love Dusty. He's not the best at these bullpen games because it's not the way he was raised and that's yep. not the way he's used to doing it. Yep. So for him to have to do this and to have to get Javier out in the first inning, and then he used Maton, who's one of his better guys that he loves, and then he had to go to Hunter Brown. My question is, is Arkady over J.P. France at some point? I know Arkady came in later, but the game was closer. I, and uh, when talking to Dusty, he wanted Arkady to pitch in those games as he did in Minnesota game four and as he did in – this LCS game for over JP France. So why did he go to JP France over Arkady in that situation? I don't know. The only thing I could think is because he, it was a different part of the lineup that he didn't think was as good. Only problem was he ended up facing the entire lineup. Well, no, the problem is he couldn't throw a strike to start the inning. No. Right? If you remember, he walked, what, two, the lead at first two guys. It was funny. They kept showing him. You could see him go, come on, let's go. He was talking to himself like, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Come on, we got to go, we got to go. Well, hell, by the time he got going, shit was over. That's tough. Moment got too big for him. It's tough, though. I mean. It just, he didn't have it. This is the this is the issue that analytics doesn't see in bringing, having bullpen games. And it, it, I mean, it, this is an analytics fault here. I'm just saying that you you have an opportunity to bring in seven guys in a game. There's a much better chance that one of them is not going to have the right stuff right away. J.P. France was going to have to face three hitters. You walk the first two. To me, I don't know why they didn't have somebody else loosening in that moment, but, like, it was just – it got away quickly because once he started throwing strikes, then they started hitting him. So it was – it was a tough, tough spot. It's not all on J.P. France. It doesn't matter. No, anyway, it's not all on was over in the first inning. A.J. just said it. It was. I'm telling you. Who cares? What do I keep saying? Score first, put pressure on him. Right? And then Michael Brantley, love Michael Brantley, I do. But double play, first and third, one out after they score. It happens. Yeah, no, I understand. Listen, I've hit in plenty of double plays in big situations. But 
in, in that situation, it sucks for him. And that then it made it 3-1, and then they scored again. It was 4-1. You know what summed up the series? The two balls, game six and game seven, Kyle Tucker jumps, and they both – one hits his glove, and the other one just missed, almost killed that lady in the Burger King hat in the front row that had no idea the ball landed in her lap in game six. Like, like this close, both of them to catching them. And both of them went out of the park for – Ranger home runs. Was it literally a Burger King hat? You didn't see her? She had her Burger King crown on? Oh, it was a crown? I don't remember. Yeah. I don't know. You, you, you and she's like this. To detail she's though, literally like this. And the ball goes. <laughs> well, there's a woman. She never even woman moved. Leaning over. There's a woman next to her leaning over in her lap. Yeah. Trying to and get the girl, out of the, the one lady never moved. She just sat there like this and the ball literally <laughs> right between her legs. Never moved. That's a skill. Like if someone goes like this and, you know, someone flinches, she wouldn't flinch. No, she, she wouldn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think she knew what was happening at that time. Well, anyway, Jordan Montgomery is a dude, okay? He pitched on Friday. He goes again in this series, in this game, two and a third, scoreless. He is racking up money right now. Like, where was he with the Yankees? They, they viewed him, Kratz, because you were there with him. And, and obviously, after you were gone, he was still there for a bit, and then they traded him, and he was pissed off. They viewed him as what a four or five, and now he is proving to be a one or a two. Like that is a massive jump in how the world looks at you and how fucking rich you're going to be. Massive jump. I mean, I think you were looking at possibly like a five year, $80 million deal. To me, I don't see why his number isn't in the 170 to 180 now. Wow. More than Rodon. Also, when you say five years, uh, 80, I think there was a time period where it wasn't even at that oh. number for him with the Yankees. You're talking about even after that. I'm saying like when right before he gets traded by the Yankees, if he had hit free agency right at that time, maybe. $50 million pitcher maybe for, for three, four years because just of his age and eats innings. Because he was younger. He eats yeah. innings. I mean, anybody that eats innings like him, anybody that makes your starts – you're auto, to me, you're automatically an $80 million pitcher. I always use Ian Kennedy as an example. The dude just was 30 plus, 30 plus, 30 plus starts a year. Went and got his contract, and I think it was 80, I think it was 80 million at that point. But like you're talking about like doing stuff like Bum Gar Bumgarner did in his career. So you're you're talking about like he there, nobody has cashed in more in this postseason than him. 